these things shall be added unto you. Yes, you may be seated. I love holidays, and Father's Day is a great day to celebrate. And it's wonderful that Father's Day has landed right here in the summer solstice, the day of length for the light. So we are celebrating the light. And this wonderful poem, writing, Marianne Woyce, Williamson wrote, this was a feature point in Nelson Mandela's inauguration speech when he took on the role of president of South Africa. Many people thought it was Nelson's words, but they're Marianne's. And here is our deepest fear. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as children do. We are born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as you let your own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we're liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Such wise words. And this is, believe it or not, the calling of us in unity as we awaken on our journey to our, amer our awareness of our oneness with God. And as we've been examining the five unity principles over the past few weeks, those, that's the template. That's the process. If we activate these principles in our lives, our destination is oneness. And this last one, so the first one is God is. The second is I am. The third is think it. The fourth is pray it. And the fifth is do it. Because it's not enough to just read about it or come into an awareness of an idea. We need to activate it. We need to own it. We need to live it. We need to do it. Now, unity writes about the fifth unity principle in this way. Knowing and understanding the laws of life, also called truth, are not enough. A person must also live the truth he or she knows. Now, as we know, the whole activity of creation that we're a part of, first, we need to have that idea. We need to have that knowing. So it's important for us to know what is our truth. But it's not enough to just know it. Reading another book, taking another class, going to the Sunday service is not enough. Because it's not enough for us to align with the idea. We need to activate it. This means that we are going to be called. I really believe that when we come to know the truth, we are going to be activated and given all that we need to do what is ours to do. That might show up in the career we're doing, 
It might show up in the sacred surface we activate in. It might be what we just do because it's so easy for us to do. Like Ron, who it's so easy for Ron to write music. To him, it's just like, just write another song. To, uh, to me, if I was to write a song, I could do it, but it would probably take me a week. Because it's not my, it's not what I do. Each of us has those gifts. And when we align with the truth and then activate it, there we are in the process of do it. Now, this truth, I love that we call this new thought, like it's something new, but new thought isn't new at all. It's so old. The truth is ever-present. That's why we observe it and honor all religions, because the truth is true. The truth is always truth. And as we turn to John, 1317, he says, if you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Once we know it, and then you might say, well, what, what does this talk of do it have to do with Father's Day? Well, the fatherly energy in the universe is that very energy of protection and giving and manifesting. Not that our, our feminine energy doesn't, doesn't do that. It does it in a different way. And to be whole, we must observe and, and acknowledge these energies within us. Do it. It's time for us to recognize that in our process as people of unity, that we acknowledge that there's something for us to roll up our sleeves and get active and start to be it. Now, Barack Obama, former president, had this to say about this. It's so powerful. The best way to not feel hopeless is to get up and do something. Don't wait for good things to happen to you. If you go out and make some good things happen, you will fill the world with hope and you will fill yourself with hope. This is why we honor sacred service. Because it's, it's different than just volunteering. It's a spiritual practice. The spiritual practice of saying, how can I help? I want to be present right now and share my energy and my sourcing to make others better, to make the world a little better. And it doesn't matter if what we're called to do is to be of sacred service to our beautiful planet, the earth, or to animals, or to, to older people or younger people. Wherever we're called, that's where we're going to find that energy to do what we can do. And as Barack has pointed out here, if we're feeling hopeless, if we're just sitting back and going, okay, God, I know you're present, and I, I know that there's wholeness, and I know there's oneness, we're not going to feel that oneness until we take action. Because the, our way of working with oneness is knowing that our hands, our feet, our heart is God's hands, heart, and feet. Working in the world bringing forth good. You can turn on CNN anytime and find out what constantly negative news is. That's not the truth. That's just fear 
exposing fear. It's not love. And sure, sometimes CNN reports some good thing, maybe, but not very often. And it's not a real good source. If you want to go find out good news, that it's not going to be a source of giving you the good news. And the good news is that we have all the power of God to live and breathe and do whatever it is ours to do. Our co-founder, Charles Fillmore, said, I fairly sizzle with zeal and enthusiasm and spring forth to do the things that ought to be done by me. Donald Curtis was a wonderful actor and became a unity minister and started Unity of Denver. And he says, when we say Father in practical Christianity, we're not thinking in terms of God being male in the physical sense. We're thinking of the overall benevolent beingness that knows only to protect, provide, and give. In our lives, it could be a woman in our life that's providing that benevolent beingness and embodying that fatherly benevolence. It's not just a male thing to do. But we honor the fathers for what they've done for us. And it's it's. Amazing. I look back at my own father. His name was Dave. And Dave was a complex man. He wasn't perfect. But I can tell you there is no human being on the planet you would want in the event of an emergency. If there was any emergency, my father was the man. Because he just had it. He knew exactly what to do be the rock, and get whatever needed to be done, whatever, the ambulance or the whatever needed to be done. Amazing man in an emergency. And to me, that ability to be fully present and to be the compassionate light when there's darkness is an image of what I look to in fatherliness. And if I can appreciate it in my father, I must have it as well. This is so important in our journey. To be grateful for those gifts that come to us through others and constantly through God. Because that gives us the fuel to do it. Mary Comforley, unity minister and writer, says, day by day, take the steps at hand. Know that with each step and each bit of guidance received, there is steady progress towards the attainment of the good you are seeking. Living is an activity. And we don't, we get to live right now, this moment. The past is gone forever, and the future never gets here. We can't live the future. We can only live now. And what we're given, that old prayer says, give us this day our daily bread. We want a whole truckload. Now we know it'll go moldy if we get a whole truckload of bread, but we get everything we need right now. We get the guidance. We get everything we need to do what is ours to do. And when we drop faith into that, then we can actively live our life as a human being, having this powerful spiritual experience, making the world a much better place right now. 
if we're waiting, maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Maybe I'll be of help in September. You know, we've done a lot of that. I'm not exempt of that. It's part of that human journey. Well, I don't have enough time, or I don't have enough energy, or I don't, I don't look good enough, or I'm not tall enough, or I'm, I'm not thin enough, or I, all the what ifs. What I know to be true is that God loves us just the way we are. Exactly the way we are right now. And God's willing to work with us, but we have to be willing to work with God. And that's why the five unity principles give us the template of how to do it. We recognize that there's only one presence and one power, God. Goddess. Divine substance. It doesn't matter what name you give it. I am. I am one with God. I'm in the image and likeness of God. What I think, what I believe, creates what I experience. So I should be aware of what it is I put my attention on. If I'm spending a day where I'm experiencing a lot of fear, what am I going to get? A lot of fear. And then praying it. We affirm and know. We practice daily to, to set all the things aside and come into that oneness in our own way. Last week I outlined the five-step prayer practice that Unity teaches and invited you to try it for 21 days. If that doesn't work, there's all kinds of ways to pray. Find yours and use it. And possibly the one that has the most effect on our life is by choosing to actively doing it. Living, being what we know to be true. Unity's been great about attending to each of us individually, you know, the wholeness of the me, loving me, myself, and I. I think the next step of unity is stepping into our spiritual maturity. And I've talked about this before. We know the truth. We know what's true. So rather than seeking for the truth, live it. Find it, and day by day, take the steps at hand, as Mary Cupfer says. And then I bring this discussion to a close with this writing from uh, William Arthur Ward, who brings it into a nutshell. Do more than belong. Participate. Do more than care. Help. Do more than believe, practice. Do more than be fair, be kind. Do more than forgive, forget. Do more than dream, work. When we set our vision or dream, the only way the dream is going to be manifest is if we work towards it. And that first work is that inner work. When, when we want that healing or we want that prosperity, we want that relationship, we have to hold it in the vision of our heart, which in a sense is the very activity that move the universe toward
towards whatever our vision or dream is. And then there's some steps we can take. If it's for a new job or a new home, we need to look and see what's available. Fill out an application. Do an interview. Find a realtor. And all of that is activating the very masculine energy within us calling on my father and I are one. And as people of unity, we are particularly supported by these basic unity principles to live and move and have our life beyond anything we may have pictured before. Because when we say yes to God, then we've relinquished control. We've opened ourselves to, okay, God, what's next? What's next? And then we still need to do eat, sleep, bathe occasionally, do the human stuff of living and therein giving us again a now moment, a now moment to say, now we begin. Now we begin. Now we begin. So let's take this into meditation as the unity singers help bring us to that place as we set things aside. sun shine upon you all love surround you and the pure world light within you God your center and therein is home breathing into this space and allowing our body to relax to renew Be open and available. When we let 
go of our need to guide the process. We turn within and say, peace be still. Peace be still. Peace be still. And within this space of being, we might ask our deepest self, what is for me to do? What am I to do? What am I ready to do? And we take this time connected with our center to listen in the silence. We're ever grateful for our increasing awareness of our oneness with God and each other. And as we bring this time and meditation to a close, let's bring with us whatever we've received in this time in meditation and allow it to inform our lives. And as we become more present of the room by wiggling our fingers, wiggling our toes, rolling our head, when we're ready, we open our eyes, and then we'll say the affirmation that goes with today's talk. Together, with God, I can do it. With God, I can do it. With God, I can do it. And so it is. Step out on the